Welcome to Abundantly Rooted, where we discuss the unequivocal truths of Scripture so that you may have hope in life circumstances. Join us as we discuss difficult topics and dig into the living Word provided by our Heavenly Father to put on the full armor of God so that you may stand firm and fight in confidence each battle in life. Welcome back to Abundantly Rooted. I am Christina Reisinger, and this is Beverly Shoemaker. Hey, Beverly, how are you doing this morning? Hey, hey doing great. <laughs> doing great. So uh, we are glad to see you back. Today, we have another interesting topic for you. We are going to talk about uh, this idea of conviction and the things that we look at, things that the Lord does place on our hearts and convicts us of. Uh, however, uh, I think that it's always a good start to uh, begin in prayer. And so I'd like to begin us off in prayer today. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for this time to come together um, with Beverly and for all of the listeners so that we can uh, serve your kingdom. And Lord, we ask that you place on our hearts every uh, word that you want spoken today at this moment. We ask that you bring the listeners so that they are able to hear your word, that you speak to their hearts in whatever situation that they are in. Lord, um, there are so many things that are going on in our world right now. Uh, People have so many feelings, so many emotions. Lord, I ask that you touch their hearts. I ask that you bring people into their lives if they are not saved and uh, teach them and lead them to you. And uh, those that are saved already, Lord, I ask that you continue to comfort them in knowing that they serve your kingdom and that they are doing good for you, Lord. Give them strength, give them your strength, and give them your perfect peace that surpasses all human understanding. In Jesus' precious name, amen. 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 So uh, Beverly, as always, before uh, we jumped on here, we were having our little chat and we talked about a lot of different topics. And then we decided, you know what, we need to really talk about this idea of conviction. And so we're going to start off, hopefully, (laughs) by trying to paint a picture of what conviction looks like. So when I hear the word conviction, maybe before years ago, when I heard the word conviction, I think of it as a kind of a dirty Word, you know, kind of shaking finger at somebody and saying, shame on you, you shouldn't be doing this. But that's not what our Heavenly Father does to um, when he convicts us of things. Do you have uh, maybe a better way to explain what conviction is from our Father? You know, I feel like for me, it's you hear Maybe you hear, don't do something. Maybe there's something you're stepping out in to do, or maybe you go ahead and you move into that, um, that certain thing. And I just feel like, I don't know, it's kind of almost like a soul gut feeling in a sense of, you know, wow, I feel horrible. Shouldn't have done that, you know, or, you know, don't do that. And it could be as simple as maybe you're going to, um, maybe you're going to get into a situation, you're making a decision to get into a situation and you hear something in your spirit that prompts you to Mm -hmm. not do that, which could be saving you from something horrible happening as well. So I do feel Mm -hmm. like, you know, it can work in both ways after the fact, even though you move in it. And then, then maybe afterwards you walk away and say, why did I do that again? It's like when Paul says in the Bible that he, you know, it's like, I don't want to do this thing. I don't want to do it, you know, and I battle it all the time. And then you go ahead and you do it. And then you walk away and you go, why, why? Maybe it's anger. Okay. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Maybe you get angry. Maybe you have an issue with anger and, and you try so hard and you pray about it. God, I don't want to be angry. I don't want to blow up at my loved ones because we always take it out on those that are the closest to us. And then you blow up and then you walk away from that going, dang it. You know, <laughs> why did I yield to that again? So mm-hmm. that's the way I see it in my life. Right. So maybe it's something that we, uh, we, re- like you said, we recognize it in our spirit and we try to repent of, but maybe it's something that we're repeat offenders of. And then, you know, it's really placed heavily on your, on our hearts 
um, that it's not the right thing to do, that it's not the right direction that we should be going in. And uh, one of the examples that I should have shared with you earlier that I want to share with our audience is uh, this idea of television. And um, number one, I, I, I don't know if you guys can hear the dog in the background, but that is my, my uh, setter. And she is, I think, uh, barking at what we call her boyfriend next door. So I apologize. Um, but so this idea of, of television and media, um, you know, and, and we know that um, anything that is not the Lord that we are focused on can be an idol. So we can have idols in people, we can have idols in, in our jobs, we can have idols in, um, you know, social media or media in itself. And uh, what it does is it takes our focus off of the Lord. And um, so when we are watching media, the example I used earlier was saying, hey, you know what, maybe God has convicted you not to watch uh, certain shows that say his name in vain. So for me, that's definitely true. And so <clears throat> when we were watching a movie, and I'll tell you right now, there are a lot of things out there where people freely use his name in vain. And so <laughs> there's not a whole lot sometimes that I can actually watch because it really just gripes me in my soul to hear it. Like I cringe. And um, because it's just, it's the, the most disrespect possible for our Heavenly Father. And so um, one of the things that we teach our children is that, hey, we can watch a show. However, if that show has something that's inappropriate, maybe it has a, a bad word on it, um, you know, we have to really sit and think, is this something that I really want to watch? Because what happens is you watch it, it has just, you know, maybe one or two bad words. You don't think it's too bad. Um, but you become desensitized to it. And then uh, you begin watching something else that maybe have, has a few more or something, uh, a little, what you consider a little worse. Maybe it has the, the F word or, you know, maybe it says the Lord's name in vain. And say so you, you're like, eh, I don't really think this is okay, but I'm going to keep watching it anyways. Maybe it won't say it again. Maybe it's only going to say it one time. And, you know, I'll just pretend that, that it's not there. And so what happens is you're starting to go through that desensitization um, process again, where um, your, your brain is saying, it's okay. It's okay. We're easing over that because it's not that big a deal. I'm not going to say it. And before too long, it comes out of your mouth before too long. It's, and you had even mentioned hanging around with our, other people who, you know, talked a certain way or act a certain, acted a certain way. Um, and so I really try to teach our kids, hey, you have to really be careful about these things. You really have to pay attention. Um, and, and it's that whole idea of the path less traveled, <laughs> if you will. You know, hey, everybody's doing it. Everybody's listening to it. It's not that bad. What do you think? You you know, you come on yourself in those situations and you you and I might not, you know, as much because we're older right now. But I know I have in the past found myself in that situation, especially younger people. And um, well, I say maybe even old, older people, too, but it's peer pressure. Right. It's, it's this right. idea of right. it's OK because nobody's you know, everybody's taking part in it, but nothing's really happening too bad. Well, and everything, and here's the thing too, and, and everybody wants to belong. I think God made us that way that we just, everybody wants to belong. And sometimes we can be willing to compromise our values, our morals, um, mm -hmm. the things that we stand on to, to belong per se, you know, to, to the tribe, whatever, yes. whatever the tribe is. Yeah. And, um, and I, and this is the thing that my husband always says that, you know, all sin starts out very small, very subtle, you know, and, and, and then you just step into that and it grows and it grows and it grows. And I had this conversation actually with my mother last week, I was talking to her. Um, I'm going to step into something here. I was talking to her about um, a particular state or a particular bill that they want to pass concerning abortion and they want it to um, be able to oversee, it was a federal law and they want to be able to supersede any state laws. And um, so, you know, most people have this attitude of, well, as long as it doesn't come to my door or in my house, you know, and I'm not touched by it, then I don't care what y'all do out there. 
But Mm -hmm. herein is that same thing. You know what? It never stops because Satan never stops. He starts out very small. Oh, it's just a blob of tissue. And then he's going to grow into, and, you know, and now we're all the way to full term. And I know we didn't, didn't, you know, start this on that, but this is what's come up in me that, Hey, you know what? Where, where is your conviction on that? You know, there's some people that are um, absolutely hundred percent against it. Other people are, have their, their, their layers of where they accept it, but where does it end? Where does this end? You know, and it, it, and it never ends well. No, it, you know, and some people are uh, convicted in the other direction where they very much feel assured of, of their thoughts and their uh, moral compass, I suppose, um, in, in the area of whatever it is that they believe. So you said they do believe that this, this idea of abortion is um, freedom. They, I think I think that is um, maybe an accurate statement where you say that some people believe that it's freedom. And so they're very convicted of the fact that um, they should fight for that freedom. However, the conviction that we are talking about is from God, and it is um, the center of the moral compass, so to speak, the center of your soul that right. convicts you of doing what is righteous, what is good in his eyes. And so, um, you know, but you, you do equally want to stand up and fight um, for that conviction. Right. So that, and I'm not saying, Hey, you have to make a ruckus, but you know, you have to stand firm and, you know, there's so many places we can go, uh, with this that may be different topics, but you know, you have to be hot or cold for the Lord. You have to stand firm for what's your conviction of what he is convicting you of. And you have to walk, you know, the path, path less traveled. You know, when your friend comes up and when we teach, you know, I always refer to, to children because right now that's where I am. I'm in the middle of raising little ones. And so we say, uh, you know, you need to take the path less taken. Well, what happens if you have a friend that comes up to you and wants you to do something that you know is wrong? And you're going to have to take the path that says, no, this is not right, you know, at the expense of maybe being made fun of. Maybe being teased, maybe being bullied, put down. Right. And you have to be tough enough to say, I'm sorry, you're wrong. Um, that doesn't mean you have to be mean, right? right. You, don't, you don't have to um, be nasty and, and put other people down. You just have to be strong enough to say no. Right. Right. Absolutely. And, and, you know, and I know that, you know, that was an extreme conversation, but it starts there. I think it just starts with, it starts little and it starts young. So mm. do you develop or, or train your children up in to be able to stand firm on what they believe, what's morally right? Or, mm. you know, do we back down and say, well, I don't want to be, can-. you know, we live in this cancel culture now. And so just saying anything that somebody doesn't like anymore and people can be, a, you know, be attacked for, because you have a different opinion. So it's, it's just so crazy. But at the same time, if you are who you say you are and God is your, you know, your center point and your moral mm-hmm. compass and everything comes from that, you, you know, he expects us to stand. Mm-hmm. He expects us to stand for what he believes in, what he expects of us, so to speak. Right. Like you said, and hot or cold. You can't be lukewarm. The, you know, Revelation, right. he's talking, he talks about that, you know, because you were lukewarm. I, you know, I'm going to spew you out of my mouth. Well, that's pretty serious stuff. Exactly. Exactly. And you can always pray, you know, if, if you're on the, the end of the, the puzzle where you don't feel convicted, nothing bothers you. You go with the flow. You don't really view it as temptation. You can actually pray and say, God, you know, I need you to speak into my heart and show me the things that you uh, dislike. And that can be kind of a hard pill to swallow because we don't like to see ourselves as, you know, being unlovely. <laughs> we don't like to see ourselves as being wrong. Most of us, I would even say. And so when you're able to stand strong and say, Lord, please, you know, speak to my heart, tell me what it is that you find unlovely in me and help me know, um, how you want me to change it, convict my heart. Um, I think, I think that you can probably expect an answer, you know, and sometimes I don't think that you even have to pray about it. Like I didn't, I didn't pray about God, um, convicting my heart about his name in vain, but 
it came because I, that's what he wanted me to do. A, a big, a good statement is the things that break God's heart should break our heart. Exactly. And, and so the, you know, that's pretty, you know, just a pretty direct, easy statement. And what would break God's heart? And, and I'm sure I do things all day long that break God's heart, you know, but he lets me know too. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Definitely. Lord, break my heart for what breaks yours. I not a song or something. I don't know. I've heard that before. It's like, I like that though. So, um, you know, what if somebody is uh, walking around and they say, you know what, I'm going to help somebody else. You know, I, I don't really uh, do all these things, but um, I'm going to go hang out, you know, with somebody who I know is doing some things that God doesn't really like. And I'm going to help them out because that's what I'm supposed to do. I'm supposed to bring people to the kingdom. What's the likelihood of um, that happening versus something different? I think that you, that God calls you into the places he wants you to go, to go into minister. But let's say it, let's, let's um, put it like this. Say that you had um, maybe an issue with alcohol and you hung out in bars and, and, you know, then your life was just upside down and you found the Lord. I think you have to be very strong in your walk with the Lord. If he's going to call you back in to go minister, because I do, do believe that there's validity in um, ministering to people walking through the same thing that you walk through, because, you know, if I never had that problem and I sat and tried to tell a person, it's kind of like us with losing a child, right? You know, there, if you haven't lost a child, you don't really understand that level of pain, but then it's the same thing with that, you know, but you have to make sure that you are very strong in your walk because it's very easy. If you go back into those places and you're not strong, And you don't have that covering and that anointing to get sucked back into that lifestyle pretty easy. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You can get sucked back into that black hole very easily. Um, Not not necessarily because you want to, just because it is so tempting. And uh, those things have a tendency to take your focus and take control over your decision making, unfortunately. Um, However, Yes, we do want to witness to people. We, we, we do want to share the word, the scripture with other people um, to help them, obviously. Um, when I was little, uh, somebody gave me this picture and they said, you know what, if you're standing on a chair and you're trying to lift somebody up, it's more difficult to lift them up than it is for them to pull you down. And we just have to be very careful. We have to pray for discernment. We have to pray for protection and strength um, when when we are around um, people who may be toxic. I guess I cannot say that even anymore. But um, so like you were talking about earlier, not knowing exactly some of the things to say. But um, you know, when you're hanging around people who you know um, need help and you want to help but maybe um, are not the best thing for you to be around because it is very easy to get sucked back into those things. Do you um, know of any scripture off the top of your head? I was trying to, to think about some of the things. I know that, you know, God calls us into, you know, sharing his word and being good servants and uh, following everything that he wants us to follow in his word and the truth. And I have some in, in Psalm 57, it says, um, trust in the Lord and do good, dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture, take delight in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Commit your way to the Lord, trust in him and he will do this. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently. We talked about that the yeah. last time that, that we had, but I think, Trusting in the Lord, doing good and dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture, you know, is is pretty strong. I also found a couple of um, scriptures. One is John 16, 8. And it says, when he comes, he will convict the world concerning sin and righteousness and judgment. So uh, I believe that if you just, you know, you look to the Lord and you ask him to convict your heart that he will. Another one is talking about faith and it says faith is the assurance of things hoped for and the conviction of things not seen. 
uh, that's a probably a different kind of conviction um, an understanding uh, of things that are going to happen, a belief system, a deep core value or um, a moral compass again that that we sit on knowing that God is who he says he is and knowing that his ways are righteous, his ways are perfect. And so when we question um, the things that that are happening in our lives, all we have to do is look at scripture and say, hey, is this biblical? Is this something that was written out for us to have as our instruction book? And if it's not, then we need to do some serious talking to the Lord and say, hey, I need you to work on my heart in this area. So, right, right. I was kind of looking for uh, some, another scripture, but um, you're right. You're absolutely right. (laughs) Uh, So if you guys uh, have any stories of being convicted of certain things, we'd love to hear those uh, things, things that are personal to your heart. Uh, things that you'd love to share to help other people. Uh, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear that as well. We're going to keep it short and sweet again today. So uh, Beverly, would you please close us out with prayer? Us, us, absolutely. Father, we come before you today and we thank you that you, again, you inhabit the praises of your people, God. When we feel things are coming in on us and we feel things are overwhelming, God, we We ask that you prick and convict our hearts to start praising you because you say when we praise you, things change. And we have and we believe what the word says, God, in all things. We don't get to pick and choose the things that we want that fit our lives, that mold around what we want to do. We have to listen to the whole word and know that the whole world word is truth. Father God, Um, you say pray in the spirit at all times. And on every occasion to stay alert and be persistent. And so we do that today, God, we, we stay, uh, stay alert. We're persistent in our prayer and we thank you. We thank you for this time that we've had together, God. And I ask that you, if anyone is out there, that God, that you would prick their conscience to reach out if they're struggling, God, that, that, um, they need help and they know they don't have anywhere to turn God, that they know that they can trust and find a safe place, a safe pasture here with an abundantly rooted. And we thank you. And we praise your holy name. Amen. Amen. So we're going to ask you guys once again, if you want to reach out to us, please feel uh, free to do so. You can reach out in the Facebook group, abundantly rooted uh, you can go to the Abundantly Rooted Life website. It's AbundantlyRootedLife.com. And you should be able to uh, send in your prayer requests. <clears throat> and then you can also send us a note about uh, what kind of things are on your heart, things that maybe even you want to hear talked about here. So we hope that you continue to be blessed and bless others. And we'll see you next time. Everyone moves through ups and downs in life. Knowing that your Heavenly Father is your stronghold and not the circumstance you face can give you the hope to persevere and begin living in your God-given purpose. I'm so glad that you're here listening today and want to invite you to join me in pursuing the Lord in all aspects of your life. Continue listening as we release the waitlist for something special that we have been developing behind the scenes.